so hello, hello to everyone. I, I'm really glad to be here. I'm glad to see you all. Uh, it's a uh, so wonderful day and wonderful uh, data fest. Um, so uh, my uh, topic today is working with uh, text data. And uh, before uh, we'll start, I would just want to tell you just like a, a little story from my life. Why uh, it's about why I became uh, the data journalist who is most interesting in text analysis exactly. Uh, so I was, uh, I have a, had a master uh, degree in sociology in Ukraine. And you know, when you are a sociologist in Ukraine, uh, you're almost, uh, the only one thing you like the most is about quantitative analysis. Just because all the sociologists in Ukraine, they are uh, studied on to, wor to work with numeric data, first of all. And, um, when you're a sociologist, your uh, world is divided into the two parts. One part is about quantitative analysis, and it's about regression, cluster, factor analysis. It's about uh, statistics and about uh, very interesting things that you can uh, do with your numeric data. And another part of your sociological work is about uh, qualitative analysis. And you know, uh, at that time, uh, I thought that if you're talking about qualitative analysis, it's about the work with text. And uh, that uh, I thought the text, it's always about qualitative analysis, especially. Uh, I thought the text you can get from the interviews, from the focus groups, uh, or sometimes from the internet, from some open sources. Uh, and what I thought uh, about uh, what I can do with my text data. So, uh, how I thought I can work with text. First of all, I had to read it. Now I understand that uh, not always when I had the text, I read it exactly. <laughs> uh, but at that time, I thought that the only way, the only one algorithm to work with text is read it. The second is to read it again, yeah, <laughs> with more attention to, to some details. Uh, then another thing, it's about find some quotes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry for that. I forgot to share his desktop. Yeah, he's talking. I hope that everything is okay with Zoom. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I thought that uh, the only algorithm is to read it, read it again, to find some quotes, some citations, some the most emotional things, the most uh, uh, the most interesting in my text. But I have to do it with my hands, yes. And the last part of this algorithm is to pre prepare the very pretty presentation, just because I thought that text analysis is always not so impressive like the numerical analysis, like the statistics, like the regression models. Uh, and that's why I thought that the final uh, part of my uh, work with text is about to prepare presentation with those uh, pretty quotes that I found with, with myself. Now I understand that uh, it's not about the text analysis at all all. And even if we talk about the quantitative analysis in sociology, we have a lot of uh, interesting and very productive tools for it. For example, MaxQDA, we have uh, a very specific methodology uh, to work with quantitative data. Uh, but uh, if we talk about text analysis in the uh, more wide, um, so, uh, so uh, we uh, understand that text, it's much more than just a quantitative data. So text, uh, we can work with text in absolutely another ways uh, and in absolutely another algorithm. 
Uh, so uh, the next part of my life was about the PhD thesis, and I decided to uh, find uh, social movements in Ukraine, to inspect social movements in Ukraine, and to analyze the network of uh, protest interaction between different organizations in Ukraine. Uh, I decided that uh, social movements, it's not about the ideology, not always about the only ideology, but it's all also about the the uh, protest co-participation. And uh, my actually PhD thesis, it started uh, to, it bring, uh, brought me into the text analysis uh, just because I decided to analyze the data on a protest, uh, on all the protests uh, that had, uh, that was in Ukraine in 2013. Uh, and uh, this uh, database uh, was actually, um, uh, absolutely open, fortunately for me. Fortunately for me, in Ukraine we had such data of all the protests in, in our country in 2011 to 2013. Uh, but unfortunately for me, this database was prepared by a group of volunteers. And you know, volunteers, it's, it's a great idea to uh, have the volunteers, but it's always about the quality of the data, unfortunately. And, you you know, this data was prepared in English, uh, and all the uh, organizations that participated in protest were uh, transliterated from Ukrainian to English. And you can imagine uh, how it, uh, how volunteers uh, transliterated it without any dictionary with full list of organization, for example. So. Um, uh, so, unfortunately for me, it was absolutely messy and dirty data about organization name because you even can't imagine how many different forms, uh, forms of organization name you can uh, have if you have volunteers who transliterated uh, some uh, Ukrainian org organization names uh, that, uh, for example, have eight words in its name. Uh, so, uh, I under, uh, I had almost three months, uh, three harmful months of, uh, cleaning this data. It, uh, more than 10,000, uh, values, uh, with, uh, all the organization names. Uh, I, uh, and for the, uh, after these three months, I decided this, that my data is absolutely idea and that my work was so hard and that's why I have to head of uh, my PhD. But now I understand that tools uh, that can help us to work with a messy text uh, can do the same thing in one or two days maximum. And today I want to share with you these tools, uh, some ideas how you can analyze your text, how, how you can prepare your text for, for analysis and uh, today uh, I will show you at least uh, two uh, tools uh, how to work with it without any programming skills. It was uh, the main idea that uh, you can work with text uh, not only in Python or our lang programming language. So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, so what we can take really from the text analysis? First of all, you can take your text and analyze it from the uh, symbolic level. For example, you uh, just can analyze your text as the uh, numbers. You can count the number of letters, count the number of some specific words or tokens, uh, and uh, to work with it as a, with numeric data. Uh, and the main uh, thing in this process is to prepare your uh, text data to numeric statistical analysis. Uh, and the second uh, is the its analysis of invisible level. I call it invisible just because we can't just count some words, for example, to find some specific topics or some specific, specific narratives. Uh, we, uh, for example, if we want uh, to uh, study the 
propaganda or a misinformation. Uh, we can't just find some specific words and count it. Or, ex for example, if we want to investigate some specific emotions, if we want to have the sentiment analysis, uh, if we want to count the uh, number of negative texts, it's not enough just to find the negative words. Uh, that's why uh, the second is this invisible level. Uh, it's uh, if we talk about the programming skills, it's about machine learning algorithm, for example. But we also have some life hacks how to do it even without the Python, and I want to show you it today. <clears throat> Uh, so let's start and uh, let's go deeper in each uh, part of uh, this, um, uh, our little plan for today. Uh, so, uh, first one, it's about counting letters. It's the easiest one, I think. It is uh, the, uh, my, uh, it's, uh, the great project by Burton Flight uh, that prepared uh, I will share the presentation with all the participants, uh, uh, and you will uh, have the possibility to go to these links uh, and to investigate it by your own. So, but uh, what about this project? Uh, in Ukraine, we have the popular uh, music group uh, Okean Elze, and it's uh, the singer Svetoslav Vakarchuk. He is the author of most of their songs. And I uh, know he have some uh, um, problems with pronouncing letter R. <laughs> and uh, he's the author of his own songs. And uh, also in Bird and Flight, they found that in his songs, there are not so many words with letter R inside it. <laughs> and they just count the number of words with letter uh, R in songs of Svetoslav Vakarchuk. Uh, and uh, they looked, for example, for that in constitution in Ukraine, there's 33% uh, of words with this uh, letter, uh, but Svetoslav Karchuk in his uh, song has only 3% of words with letter R. It's a funny uh, idea and funny investigation, but I think it's the best uh, example of uh, counting letters in the words, and that with counting of letters, you can find something really interesting uh, for your readers, for example. And I have the question to you, uh, if you will have such um, project in, and you have no programming skills, in what tool you can make it? Is it possible to make such project, for example, in Google Sheets? Yeah, it's control F or command F. Uh, just a search for one letter. Uh, yeah, uppercase or lowercase, uh, yes. And uh, you can do this project without any specific tools, just Excel, Google Sheets, or numbers, what you prepare, actually, and do it and count it, <laughs> yes. So it's much pretty easy to work with such data. Uh, the another example is about counting words. And if we are talking about text analysis, it's one of the most popular um, topics is about counting some specific words. Uh, it is one, just one of example of the examples. It's my project when I um, counting the number of mentioning George uh, Soros in Ukrainian and Russian use. It was a period of uh, Alexei Hunchuruk government, and uh, the idea, the topic of external rules on the uh, uh, Gonchuruk, it was the main uh, topic of uh, discrimination or, and of Russian propaganda in Ukraine. And uh, you see the uh, red area is about the Gonchuruk's government. And uh, till the end of the Gonchuruk's government, it was the uh, highest. It was, uh, for example, almost 100 news with George Soros inside it for a day. Uh, and uh, it was... Uh, 
the tool how to discriminate the whole government and even after the uh, its resignation uh, anyway the topic of external rule and George Soros uh, actually it's it's still uh, alive in Ukraine so it's like one of examples uh, how you can just count one specific word for example Soros or uh, it's very famous in Ukraine the word Sarasata yeah it's like the ch children of George Soros or his uh, uh, <laughs> I uh, don't remember how to call it in English, uh, marionetka uh, of George so how, how, how? Puppets, yes, thank you. Uh, George Soros puppets. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, uh, this uh, word is still very popular in Ukraine, and uh, we, uh, from time to time, we uh, count it uh, just to find this uh, topic, this narrative about the external rule of Ukraine. Um, and another one example, uh, it's f quite hard to count all the uh, Soros in uh, news, but it's much more easier to count, for example, uh, different uh, names of uh, the coronavirus vaccines. Uh, so we, for example, we just, start, uh, just counted how many times on different sites in news about coronavirus, uh, this media talked about different vaccines, for example, uh, you can find that um, this uh, in the uh, right part of the screen it's uh, Russian sites, Russian mainstream and Russian manipulative sites that write about Ukraine mostly. Uh, it's obviously that they wrote uh, mostly about the Sputnik V. Uh, but on Ukrainian manipulate, uh, Ukrainian mainstream you can see that almo uh, almost in 60-70% uh, uh, of all their news uh, they wrote about Pfizer. It's it was one year ago, it's not about now. Uh, yes, it was the most popular vaccine in uh, Ukrainian uh, medias. And now we can see that in Ukraine we have such uh, things that Pfizer, uh, mo most of Ukrainian think that Pfizer is the best vaccine against the coronavirus. So we can see that in media, Pfizer was the most popular one year ago. Uh, different media wrote a lot about uh, Pfizer, but less, for example, about AstraZeneca. And now we have the popular Pfizer, like the one of the best vaccine in the uh, among our audiences. So it's just like an example how you can use uh, the word counting and what ideas you can uh, actually uh, uh, realize with uh, such a method. I'm sorry. Uh, but let me ask you one more question. Uh, first of all, uh, two more questions. Uh, one, in which two you can realize such project? Is it enough of, to use uh, Google Sheets? But if we imagine that we have the uh, already prepared data frame with a rows as a, a one row, it's one text, can we count such words through Google Sheets? Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> but what problem we will have if we'll uh, do it in such way? Um, but I'm talking not about the uh, data, I'm talking about the message. Uh, for example, we, are re uh, we have the uh, prepared, already prepared data, data frame with all the text in each row. Uh, but what problem we will have, we will just uh, put the control F and find, for example, uh, vac vaccine, the word vaccine. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's about the main problem is about different forms of word. Uh, it's not a, such a great problem with English language, I think. But anyway, even in English, you have uh, different forms. Uh, for example, you have the word uh, uh, 
go uh, word good and better. Yes, it's almost about the same thing, but it's another form of one idea of good goodness. Yeah, uh, but in the, for example, Russian or Ukrainian language, there are much more different forms of uh, one word. For example, if you will try to find all the mentions of uh, Zelensky, you will uh, have to find Zelensky, Zelenskovo, Zelenskomu, Zelenskim, Zelenskiy, uh, and, uh, and other. So you will have uh, multiple forms of one word. Uh, it's easy when we are talking about the name of vaccine, but anyway, even with Pfizer, we have the uh, Pfizer BioNTech, we have the Pfizer in English letter. We have Pfizer, uh, for example, uh, Russian transliteration, we have Pfizer with uppercase, lowercase. So we have a uh, different forms of one word, of one token. And it, it is the most uh, popular problem with uh, preparing text data for analysis. And let's just talk a, a little bit about lemmatization. It is um, the uh, idea, limitization is the idea of preparing your text uh, to the uh, only one form. For example, if you have better, uh, limitization is about uh, uh, to tr transform it to good. If you have walking, it's about work. Uh, so if you have multiple, for example, dresses, uh, limit, uh, lemma, the main form of this word will be dress. Uh, so, lemmatization is uh, the one of the first things that you will do with your text data, uh, especially if you work with uh, different programming languages. Uh, your text analysis, uh, starting from tokenization, it's dividing your text into tokens, for example, into words. And then one of the first things that you will do is lemmatize your text. And it's like the easy way. There are a lot of different libraries in Python, uh, where we can do uh, the limitization. But you remember the idea of my speech today is to show you <laughs> some tools uh, where you can do the same thing, but without programming skills. And you know, if we'll go uh, further about the text analysis, uh, I will give you the really good tools. But for limitization, unfortunately, it's one of the main problems uh, that you will have if, if you will prepare your text without Python, just because uh, there are some online tools for limitization of your text. Let me just show it's uh, one of the uh, sites uh, that pre uh, preparing your uh, text and uh, give your lemmas. Oh, just give me, uh, for example, uh, it's limitization can be used for many purposes. Uh, just process my text. And result, uh, output, you see that uh, it's limitization. Uh, it, uh, what is this or what about this? For example, uh, B, it's verb. Yeah, it's like the different, um, it's about the uh, POS uh, tagger. Uh, it's like the morphological features uh, of each word. Uh, yes, and let's just. Uh, with, uh, show me without it. Uh, what, uh, how will we uh, look this limit, uh, limitized text? Limitization can be used for many purposes. Yes, so you, you can see that the only word uh, that uh, changed is uh, the word use to uh, the main form. But if you will have a uh, much more difficult text, uh, you will have m more transformations inside. So uh, as I understood uh, this site, uh, you can use some RTF file or TXT file, I'll upload here and uh, have the result. It's your amortization. Of course, you, if you have a lot of text data, it's not the easiest way. It's really the harder way uh, how you can can limitize it. Uh, but anyway, there are some um, uh, almost ready uh, and um, open tools how you can prepare uh, your text data. Uh, there is one more uh, idea how you can work with your text and limitize it. It's create your own dictionary. <laughs> there are many uh, different uh, dictionaries in, in internet for each language. Uh, I think 
Uh, you can just find the dictionary, all forms, and the main form. Uh, just create it in its, uh, the link to a blog with idea how to do it. It's just download your dictionary, uh, download it into Excel or Google Sheets, and with a uh, function uh, like a, a lookup, <laughs> you can uh, each your uh, you can um, split uh, your text into words where each line will be uh, one word. And uh, by the lookup, look up, find as, uh, the main form of these words uh, in your dictionary. But I'm not sure that it's the <laughs> easy way uh, to do it, uh, but it's also possible uh, to create some, uh, or for example, you can create just once, you, cre you can create uh, your dictionary for lemmatization, and then you can use it in all the further projects. So if you understand that you have many projects of the same time, or you will have them in the nearest time, for example, uh, you can do it in such way too. But of course, uh, the easiest way for limitization, <laughs> unfortunately, is still open Python and do it in Jupyter Notebook with uh, one or two functions. But it's from, uh, or you can find uh, someone who will do it for you. <laughs> it's always the um, uh, one more uh, way to how to uh, work with it. Uh, so, uh, the next, uh, it's, uh, the, uh, I already told you about the database of protest events and reports that I worked with, uh, till my PhD thesis. And, uh, I want to use it, uh, uh, when I will show you the another, um, tool, uh, another tool to prepare, uh, textual data for analysis, the messy data. So you remember uh, that if you want to uh, analyze text as numeric data and you have the messy data, you will have uh, to find the similar forms for one word. But if you have the limitization process, you, we are talking about the full text and full text without mistakes. Because if we will have some mistake in our words, our limitizators, uh, they will not understand what word is it, uh, and then uh, they will not limitize it. But if we'll have some mistake, for example, uh, one or two different uh, letters inside our word, we can use uh, cluster analysis. Uh, you, we can use text clusters uh, to uh, make the um, to make the similar forms for uh, different words with different mistakes. Uh, so uh, the main tool to work with messy text data is OpenRefine. OpenRefine or Google Refine, it was called sometimes. Uh, it, uh, can you put your hands up if you already know about OpenRefine? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Fortunately for me, it's not the, all the uh, hands were raised in this <laughs> auditory. Uh, so Open Refined is very popular, it's famous too. It's open, uh, as I know it's open source. Uh, yes, it's open uh, source too, to, uh, uh, to preparing your data for analysis. Not only text data, you can prepare also some numeric data, but it is the best way to um, uh, work with your messy uh, text values. So uh, I want to uh, propose you to just to show some how to work with it. Uh, so in the future project, you will know uh, what for you can use it. <clears throat> so, uh, I will open uh, the open refine on my uh, notebook. Uh, just a second. Yeah. Open Refine, uh, you have to install it uh, on your uh, notebook, but uh, it will uh, open uh, it, uh, in the, your uh, browser. So, uh, first of all, uh, you have to choose your file to work with. It can be absolutely different uh, formats from CSV to uh, Excel uh, or Google Data Documents. Uh, you can do download it from the computer or uh, you can use some web addresses. But, uh, oh, sorry. 
uh, I will choose a prepared f a file. It's about the protest events uh, in uh, 2013 in Ukraine. Just a second, it will be uploaded. <clears throat> Um, so open refine uh, will open our uh, data frame uh, and uh, you can uh, use it uh, just uh, to trans uh, for example for transforming your values uh, for uh, preparing some uh, additional uh, columns additional variables um, just it's updating preview it's not a very big data frame it's uh, as i remember it's uh, 6000 of values but it has uh, a lot of columns that's why it needs some time to uh, preview for example mm -hmm. yeah uh, so preview uh, in preview i see uh, that uh, it works with data frame absolute okay there are no split uh, uh, for example div uh, for additional splits and I will create this project. <clears throat> Just open the plan. How to? <clears throat> and one more <laughs> second. So uh, open refine. The main thing about open refine is uh, that it saves all the history of your transformation. So all the transformations that you have in the open refine, the history of it, it will it will save it. So uh, your project, uh, you for example, uh, make a lot of transformation. You clean uh, your uh, variable, uh, and you create made it made for example thousands of transformation. Uh, it will be saved, and your project will be reproducible. And it's very important. For uh, for example, if you uh, work in Excel uh, and you make some transformation by your hand, you will not have the saved history of this transformation. Open Refine gives the possibility to uh, save the history, to uh, upload, for example, uh, the history of transformation, and you can reproduce this transformation, for example, on another data. So how the open refine works? It shows you some of the scope of your data. Uh, as you can see, all the uh, each row, uh, each pro it is one protest that uh, was had been uh, in Ukraine in 2013. Uh, each protest has uh, ID, unique uh, value of this protest, uh, and there are some uh, another additional information about protest. It's if, uh, event start date, event end day, uh, even day of the week. Uh, what action it was? It was protest or it was repression, coercion, or another. Uh, exact, what action exactly it was, uh, for example, demonstration or symbolic or rally, uh, action structure, if it's uh, such information is about this protest. Uh, the source of all this information is uh, news. It, uh, it is... Uh, um, analysis of almost uh, 200 of different sites as local uh, from the whole Ukraine, uh, mainstream sites and some local or organizational sites. Um, if, and if they posted uh, the news uh, about the protest, this protest comes to this uh, database. Action form and actually the uh, main um, variable that I needed for the network analysis is actor specified. It's all the organization and all the participants of each protest uh, and all the information about it uh, that we know. For example, uh, in first protest on January 1st, it was the protest of uh, Svoboda and Sichovy Kuring. It is organizations uh, who participated in pro in demonstration uh, on 1st of the uh, January. Um, so, uh, how can we work with Open Refine? First of all, we can, for example, uh, we want to reorder or remove some roles. Uh, it is the Excel uh, data frame. That's why there are some 
uh, additional columns. They are absolutely empty, but uh, they uh, were in our uh, Excel sheet. That's why they are <laughs> open in our uh, open refined uh, project. So we can just drop them here, for example. Unfortunately, we can ch we can't choose uh, some scope of these columns, and we have to do it in by our hands. For example, I will not do it uh, for all these columns. And for example, we want to sort. Uh, we want to uh, uh, event start, action type, and uh, actor uh, specified at the start of our data frame because we will work with them. Uh, okay. Yes. And we uh, sorted our data frame. And you see that we already have the first transformation of our data frame, and you can always undo all the transformation. Uh, so the next uh, stage is uh, let's, for example, um, uh, filter our data frame and choose only protest because action time, let's look at the, uh, I use uh, uh, this variable, this uh, arrow, yes, uh, facet, text facet. I want to look at all the variants uh, of um, uh, this uh, variables. And I see that in um, my data, there are almost 5,000 of protests. And also we have positive response, other repressions, and negative response. And uh, if I want to filter my data, I have to only to click on negative response. And now I have uh, 1,102 matching rows, and I can work only with them. So it's like the way to filter uh, your variables. And for example, let's uh, delete these uh, values, just because it's not in we are interested only in protests, for example. Edit row, and we can remove matching rows. And now we have a zero negative response in our data and uh, five uh, thousand uh, and half rows. So for example, we can uh, remove all the uh, uh, not used uh, values. Um, or uh, the next thing that we want is, for example, just uh, to choose those protests that started from the November of 2013, because uh, November of 2013 is the start of a uh, revolution in Ukraine. Uh, so, uh, but we see that our variable with time is not, it doesn't look like the uh, time format. Uh, so we can do uh, some additional transformation on variable. Let's, for example, um, edit column and add column based on this, uh, not transforming this, but adding uh, additional, for example, date, oh, sorry, date. And open refine uh, gives you the possibility to uh, write some expressions, some functions that will help you to transform your variable. Uh, I, in my presentation, it's uh, linked for a function of open refine, a grail function actually. It's a boolean string function. It's not so many function, but it is enough uh, to transform your variable. And let's, for example, um, transform our date. What we can do? We can, for example, uh, will you split? Split by uh, space. Yes, and the result will be, as you can see, uh, the list of splitted object. And uh, we, uh, the most simple way how you, we can choose, for example, just uh, day, month, and year is, uh, for example, split and choose the object number. It will be number two, yes, zero, one, two. Two, two. Yes, it will be the number of our day. Uh, plus, for example, let's uh, uh, add symbol, and again, value split, it is a plus uh, uh, number one, yes, it will be a month, and uh, plus, uh, but not number one, but number five. Yes, and here is our transformation. You can see the, uh, the result, uh, what will be from your uh, original value and new uh, value. And, uh, okay. 
and now we have the our original col uh, column event start date and we have uh, the additional column date uh, and uh, now this date is about is, is a string but let's for example uh, make some common transform uh, edit sales common transformation and uh, to date yes. And now we have the date uh, variable in our open refine. And uh, for example, we can use it to filter our protest uh, and to choose only, uh, and again, we go to the facet, but now we are interested not in text facet because if we will choose text facet, it will give us all the uh, different uh, values of this variable in text, but we are interested in timeline. Uh, time light facet and we see the little histogram on uh, how many uh, you can see it's uh, much more protest were uh, in Ukraine 2013 the end of the year because of a revolution so we can just choose everything starting from for example 5th of November and we see it's uh, 1,900 uh, 1, matching rows. So uh, you can, in such a way, create more and more filters. Uh, for example, you can filter by uh, actor specified. Uh, you can choose a uh, text filter and uh, choose only the values with, for example, CPU, it's Communist, uh, Communist Party of Ukraine. Yes, and uh, it will be all the protest with CPU uh, where uh, CPU uh, uh, participated. Um, but uh, the main uh, thing that I wanted to show you about Open Refine is uh, the uh, preparing uh, this uh, column of actor specified. Uh, we can see that. Uh, different uh, organization who participated together, uh, they are uh, all, all in one uh, variable actor specified uh, with co uh, divided by comma. So we can actually, if we want to create uh, to make the network analysis, we uh, what we will need? We will need to create the data frame uh, uh, where uh, we will have in one row one ID protest ID. ID and another variable will be uh, one organization that participated in this protest. And th then we will have the adjacency list for network analysis. It, it will be enough to uh, download it, for example, into the GFE or another tool for network analysis. But for, it, for this, uh, we uh, first of all, we have split all the actors of our protest into the different columns. And it's really easy to, uh, to make by um, uh, edit column and again we add uh, one more additional column for example it will be actor number one and we'll, uh, what uh, will be actor number one it's for example value split but split uh, by comma uh, and for example the column uh, actor number one it will be oh uh, actor number zero in this list uh, so if uh, we have only one participate uh, participant in protest we will have it in one column in this column if we will have two we will have only the first uh, one okay and we actually have this uh, new variable actor one we can look at it it looks like everything is okay for example yes residents of Zvenigorodka and power of law they together participated in this protest and we have here only residents of Zvenigorodka and uh, the main thing uh, what uh, why I wanted to show is open refine is about the text clustering so if you will look at the uh, facet te text facet or uh, all the different values in the variable actor one uh, you see that it's uh, eight hundreds of different choices. You can sort them by name or by count. And you see that the most popular um, participators uh, are 
just protesters. But for, for example, for network analysis, uh, we understand that we don't need such um, participants just because it's about uh, some abstract uh, a group of people, uh, but for example, for uh, network analysis of organization of participate uh, co-participation of organization and protest, we need just the names of um, organizations. So we can add, uh, for example, a text filter. Uh, put it upper. Oh, sorry. Uh, put it upper, and for example, we want to delete from the uh, from our data frame all the unknown uh, because we see that unknown it's uh, different uh, types of unknown unknown uh, from the uh, upper uh, in lower cases all the letters from the upper case unknown ha hackers unknown 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 policies uh, policy and unknown uh, so we can just. Uh, delete whole scope, for example, of these rows, filtered rows, remove matching rows, and our data frame again becomes smaller. But we see that in our data frame, for example, uh, there is a uh, built uh, political party uh, all in uppercase, but there are also uh, some uh, values with lower case of build. So uh, one more transformation that can be done easily is, for example, edit cells. And some common transform is about, for example, uh, pu put all the values to lower case. And then we will have lesser uh, choices, uh, different choices in our data frame. Then we can also uh, make common transform. We can collapse uh, consecutive white spaces or trim leading and trailing white space just by one click. And again, we have uh, oh, for minus three additional choices. Um, yeah, or we can. Uh, more and more delete uh, collapsible spaces, some more uh, transformed uh, transformation. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have uh, such these different choices, and uh, let's uh, let's actually cluster them. Let's look if we have uh, some organization that looks al uh, almost uh, similar, but almost similar, not similar, absolutely. So let's just cluster all uh, our variable and what we will have. Uh, first of all, uh, cl clustering methods in OpenRefine. Uh, there are a few cl uh, different uh, clustering methods. So, uh, what is the idea of uh, text clustering in OpenRefine? How, how will you use it? You will choose different clustering method. Look through, for example, Prosvita and Prosvita, it is the same, but there are additional symbols. So, you can use this word in Prosvita and uh, click if you need to merge them. Or, uh, uh, yes, Anonymous International. I don't even see the difference, but maybe it's about some spaces. Uh, and uh, you see that local dwellers, pro -U, uh, protesters, and pro U protesters, local dwellers, it's almost the same, but it has uh, different forms in our database. And for example, for our network, network analysis, it's critical thing. We, we, we have to have the similar forms uh, for uh, different uh, organization. So let's, for example, select all, merge selector and cluster. Uh, no cluster we found with the selected method, so we can select another method. Uh, and here it is. Here we have uh, more organization to merge, merge selector on the cluster. And you go further, uh, you choose another function, but you see that uh, this function, for example, it's about the same uh, first part of your value. It's, and uh, you can't merge uh, ivano frankivsk students and ivano frankivsk young mothers, for example. So it's not uh, for your task uh, method. And you can go uh, further, or for example, you can choose a method near nearest neighbor. Near
nearest neighbor is a method where you can choose how many different symbols or letters you can have in different words. So, for example, if you have radius one, it means that you have uh, pro EU protectors and pro EU protesters, uh, and uh, I even can't see the difference. Ah, pr -p -u. So, uh, so it can be the a little mistake with one symbol. Uh -huh. Some problems with. Uh, so this method is really good for uh, such uh, task. For example, select all, merge selector and recluster. Uh, and uh, uh, block charts, it's, it means that in your words, uh, you have at least six symbols. You can, for example, uh, make your radius two. And uh, again, uh, again uh, activate your clustering. So after clustering, you will have protesters and protested. And again, you can merge them, for example, or people and four people. Uh, actually, you can merge all the uh, different number, four people, five people, 125 people. You can merge all these values into the uh, value people. Or, for example, you can just uh, filter all the people uh, words in your uh, variable and delete if you don't need it, for example, for organizational analysis. So the idea of open refine if uh, that uh, you will create more and more and more text clustering and uh, your variable uh, variables becomes uh, more and more and more similar, will have the similar forms. Uh, and if you have the dirty data, some messy data, it is one of the best tools to prepare it for your analysis. Uh, and for example, if we will uh, select all merge selector and the cluster, and then we just close this window, we see that we have not uh, 750, but 715 uh, choices of our variable. Uh, and uh, you can make more and more transformation. For example, you can um, delete some additional symbols. Uh, you can, again, edit cell transform. Uh, I will use, uh, for example, from history, I have the, uh, you can reuse your function. For example, I already prepared the function uh, that will replace all the symbols uh, like this, replace uh, with nothing. Oh, it's some problems with, uh -huh. oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> So you can replace if you understand that you don't need any additional values inside uh, your uh, brackets. Or you can uh, split by brackets and choose only uh, something inside it for your variable. So you can do any uh, additional transformation. And remember that you have uh, all the history of your transformation uh, also uh, saved. So it's about the open refine. You uh, can make additional variables. For example, you can find all the po uh, political uh, parties. If actor one is political party, for example, um, transform and uh, its value. Let's reuse preview. So uh, you can use some uh, logical operator, for example, or. Uh, if value contains uh, the name Udar, Svoboda, Butte, CPU, or another, it's a political, uh, Ukrainian political parties of 2013. So uh, you, for example, you can uh, make some list and create additional variable without uh, control F in uh, Google Sheets, for example. So it's about the open refine, one of the best tools to prepare your uh, text data for analysis. Uh, in open refine also uh, what you can add and what you can use in open refine is uh, the regular expression who knows about regular expressions 
or more people I see <laughs> know about regular expression. It's uh, a sequence of characters that specify a search pattern. It's uh, the way how you can tell, for example, for the open refine, please filter for me uh, all the uh, values we, that starts, for example, start, yes, it's like the symbol of uh, symbol ABC. It means that ABC is the beginning of the line. For example, you want uh, to get, for uh, let's come back to the open refine, you want to get all the uh, protests that uh, was uh, on Tuesday, for example, and uh, you can actually use the uh, regex in uh, open refine uh, for your transformation or uh, you can uh, for example with uh, regexes you can uh, ask uh, open refine just to filter only uh, first word uh, and just let me show uh, for example that's the cell transform um, yes um, Ah, uh, uh, by the way, the idea of the function replace is also, it was the uh, regexes, in, it was uh, inside the brackets, all the uh, symbols that I wanted to replace. Or, for example, if I want to replace any uh, letter, all the letters, uh, I just put A to Z and A to Z in the lower case. And uh, I will delete all the text, for example, data in my variable if I don't need it. Or uh, I can ask to delete all the numbers, all the numbers as I, any digit, it's the slash D, slash, uh, slash D. And you can see that uh, everything that um, are numbers deleted, or if I put a slash D uh, in uppercase, I will delete all uh, not uh, numbers from my variable. So if you work with text, regular expression, it's your uh, heaven and hell. Heaven just because uh, you can do a lot with your regular expression, but the hell is just because even your uh, if you wrote the regular expression but by your own if it's quite big if you will try to read your regular expression for example after one week uh, it's uh I think that uh, it's very high possibility that you will not understand <laughs> what you actually wrote. Uh, that's why this site, Regex 101, it's uh, one of the best, I think, sites to work with Regex, uh, just to put uh, there your text and try to write uh, the Regex and to look if it uh, really makes uh, the thing that you, that you want it to do. Uh, and uh, one another tool that I want to show you to, uh, today is Yoshi Coder. So if open refine, it was uh, for the text analysis, text preparing text data for uh, cleaning your text data. Yoshi Coder, it's the tool for analysis your uh, text according to some dictionaries. Uh, remember, uh, here's a slide that we can uh, uh, work with text on the symbolic level. It's working with text. Uh, like with the numeric data, uh, but another level, it's uh, about the invisible level, it's trying to uh, get some narrative, some emotions, and I think that Yoshi Coder is one of the tools that can help you with such task. Uh, so, uh, Yoshi Coder is also open source uh, project that you have to install to your computer, I just open it. Uh, so Yoshi Coder, it's uh, the tool, uh, how it looks like. Maybe someone in this auditory knows Yoshi Coder. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, Yoshi Coder is just one of the uh, big scope of specific tools that work uh, with dictionaries. So it's not so original, but I think it's one of the most simple uh, and most user-friendly, maybe, uh, tool. And it's quite old, not so <laughs> new, but it's uh, stable. <laughs> so Yoshi Coder need uh, ask you to download some of your documents. Actually, the best thing how you can work with Yoshi Coder is to download there uh, some scope of TXT file. For example, I downloaded the uh, 
all the uh, last 100 messages in a Telegram a group, uh, anti-vaccinators uh, Telegram group, uh, and I uh, just prepared it with TXT files in one uh, directory. Just let me add documents, desktop, desktop, TXT. I will choose all the TXT file in this directory. And here it is. So documents are uh, in your uh, right uh, window. And you, if you will uh, click on the, one of these TXT files, you will see the text uh, inside this file. So for example, it is, uh, it is uh, unfortunately, it's Russian text, uh, but it's uh, one of these texts of, of this Telegram channel. And for example, uh, for example, uh, I want to analyze all the texts uh, from this channel and to find uh, the texts that uh, are about uh, COVID, coronavirus, uh, or I want to find uh, some text about the vaccination or again, the vaccination. How can I do it? I can prepare the dictionary with words uh, that uh, can uh, we use to get this topic. For example, uh, to get the topic of COVID, we can add the uh, dictionary, for example, uh, COVID. Uh, and we can add to this dictionary different patterns. Uh, COVID can be in uh, lowercase. Yes, and we have the additional pattern. We can add, add pattern with. Uh, mm -hmm, I don't understand why it. Uh -huh. uh, for example, in, it's uh, in Russian. Uh, corona and add uh, symbols uh, in any forms of coronavirus, coronavirus sign to other, add uh, the same with the uh, uppercase and so on and so forth. So you, we actually create a little, little dictionary about the COVID and we want to look uh, how many uh, different texts from all the, our documents are uh, have the COVID or coronavirus or uh, another form inside it. So first of all, you can ask to um, underline if it has oh, in this text, uh, I don't, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can. Uh, you have to uh, choose all your documents, and for example, ask to show uh, all the uh, coronavirus inside the text. And for example, you, uh, here is uh, one of the sentences about coronavirus. Uh, and what is the uh, plus of the Yoshi Koder? It shows not only the, uh, that COVID is inside the text, but also it shows the context. You can read whole sentence with this word inside it, for example. Or you can uh, create additional dictionary with, for example, vaccination. Uh, I told that it is a uh, Telegram channel of anti-vaccinator. That's why there are a lot of uh, terms uh, vaccine. I will add some more patterns just to show you the result. Vaccine search or vaccine. Unfortunately, you can't uh, use uh, the regex here because it's just so and for example you see that uh, uh, in this uh, different documents there are a lot of uh, sentences with vaccines inside it and uh, of course in such um, way it's difficult to analyze but what you can uh, use uh, Yoshi Coder for you can download the um, table the data frame with is result of counting of each dictionary uh, that you created on your uh, text data so um, for example let's just uh, create I choose the whole or uh, the main dictionary I choose all the document uh, that we downloaded and create the report 
uh, apply a dictionary to selected documents, download uh, it as a CSV to desktop. And just let me show how it looks like. I doesn't. I don't see it. Why do, it doesn't? Mm -hmm. Selected document. Yes, CSV to desktop. Uh -huh. So the result of uh, your Yoshi Coder analysis of your dictionary is exactly the table where in each row is your each TXT document and uh, untitled is our uh, all the uh, uh, dictionaries that we created and here is uh, the dictionary COVID dictionary vaccination and we see that for example in uh, first uh, TXT we have one uh, vaccination uh, word on vaccination uh, among 47 words, uh, so, or for example, let, let's just uh, uh, sort by vaccination from the, uh, uh, it's like the zoom doesn't give me the possibility, ah, uh, sortovania, vaccination, <laughs> Just a second. What the vaccination? So uh, we see that in uh, TXT number 46, we have five words uh, about va vaccination or vaccine, and we can go to Yoshikoder to look for example, 46 TXT and let's use the vaccination. And, and here they are, yes, после vaccination, vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. So what we can use uh, Yoshikoder for? For example, you want to prepare uh, the, uh, you, you have uh, the idea uh, how to to organize your dictionary, for example, to find anti-vaccination uh, or topics. Uh, so you can create, for example, a dictionary on pro-vaccines and anti-vaccines uh, with some uh, specific words that can be used to find this topic. And you can find, uh, you can download all your texts and to find in which of this text uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, find this topic. Or, for example, you download Load all the news uh, for one month, and you can find uh, can uh, understand in which percent of news uh, there is a, a topic about coronavirus, for example. In which percent of uh, whole text uh, there is um, mentioned some political parties or political opponents or some messages uh, that you are looking for. Or, for example, another additional thing: how you can use your shikoder. You can not just create your own dictionary you can use uh, already created dictionary for example there are um, uh, some uh, tone dictionary uh, that is available in the internet for example uh, tone dictionary for Ukrainian as I know it's uh, absolutely open for Russian language also uh, it is the list of words uh, that have negative or positive uh, emotion it. For example, uh, the word death will have the negative emotion. The uh, word happiness will have the positive emotion. And I want just to show you one more example of such project. Uh, it is an analysis of all the titles of news uh, on uh, one of the mainstream media in Ukraine. It's media TS TSN. It is the um, media on uh, Kolomoisky oligarch uh, channel. And this media, it... Um, um, before the president election in Ukraine, last president election, uh, this media did a lot for Zelensky. Uh, uh, Zelensky actually even uh, told that uh, he want to go to the presidential election on this uh, channel. And so it's a very interesting thing was when we analyzed by the scope of, uh, by the tonal, uh, tone sentiment dictionary for Ukrainian, we just looked uh, through the uh, whole uh, scope of 
of titles from uh, news from TSN, and we'll uh, try to we counted how many negative words uh, were in these titles. For example, it, it means how many news uh, were about death, killing, some problems, uh, something bad, something negative. So uh, before presidential election, on this channel were almost half of this uh, news were about something bad or had the uh, words with negative emotion. But after the result, when uh, Zelensky won these uh, elections, actually uh, news on this channel became more uh, positive. Uh, almost for 10 uh, percent uh, of all the titles, they became uh, uh, not positive but less negative. So uh, uh, it's like an example how you can use uh, sentiment dictionaries, and you can just download the sentiment dictionary to your decoder and to look through uh, all your text, how many negative words in it or positive words, and you can with your decoder download uh, such. Um, report how many in each txt you can count in total for example how many for example negative words were in this uh text or uh you can uh or you can uh Counts the number of positives, and one more thing, the last thing that I want to show by Yoshi Koder, uh, additional thing is uh, you can even not just create the dictionaries, you can just open the Yoshi Koder, download one txt file, and what you can do, you can count words, and the result of counting your words will be the matrix. Uh, how many each word uh, used in your text. So it's like the easy tool to count the most popular word in your TXT file. So you, I will not do it because I have the uh, quite big uh, scope of documents and I will have a very big matrix with each different word inside it. But it's uh, really useful for counting the most popular uh, words uh, that for for example, used different president, uh, presidents in their inauguration uh, texts, for example, or in their uh, New Year speeches. <laughs> you can uh, analyze it with Yoshi Coder. Or, for example, you can uh, pr previously uh, create the, uh, do the limitization of your text and then uh, count the most popular words. It will be a more um, accurate result. Um, so um, here, actually, what I wanted to show you and what I wanted to tell you about. And I'm ready for your comments, questions, and ideas. <laughs> Uh, thank you for sharing really practical tools and skills how we can do so. So, uh, do you have any questions for Yulia before we go to break? Okay, let's. I'll, I'll navigate my through. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, actually, I do uh, like the text org very much. Uh, thank you for your job. So, I'm Azada from Farset. Uh, also, I'm data journalist in Kyrgyzstan. So, could you please uh, just clarify? So, sentiment diction dictionary for like defining the tone of the text. We, it's online tools, right? So, we can uh, find it both in English and Russian, for example. Uh, sentiment, I just can uh, open this link and to show that uh, it's almost, it's downloaded, for example, to the GitHub. It's mm -hmm. a TSV or CSV file. Uh, and just let me tone dict TSV. And how it looks like, it's just the word and the result from minus two to two, where minus one, it's uh, abort, abortion. So uh, it's, it's neg negative, negative, right? negative uh -huh. yes. And uh, for example, in this tone dictionary, it's a different level of negativeness. For example, uh, avaria, aviodar, uh, it's the most negative, for example, but uh, abortion uh, or automat, or uh, it's less negative. For, and you can even choose the most negative only, or the most uh, positive, like the god, it's uh, positive. Uh, and you can find, for example, more positive. So it's all, you can just download CSV file 
and then upload it for, uh, to your Google Sheets. You can actually you can uh, do the same thing like with the Yoshi coder, but with the um, uh, lookup in Google. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, but in Yoshi coder, you don't have to uh, uh, you organize your data uh, with one word in one row. You can uh, just have the uh -huh. scope with text and uh, dictionary. Yeah, I, I mean, so you created it uh, like uh, in Ukrainian, right? It's and in Ukrainian. Uh -huh. uh, Russian language is also open. Uh, you just can uh, Google the uh, tone dictionary, Russian mm -hmm. tone dictionary, English. And there are a lot of open, uh, absolutely free resources created by some organizations, some linguists, for example, and some machine learning engineers. OK, thank, thank you so much. Yeah. We had another question here. Um. Hello. Uh, since your presentation was based on the idea of uh, analyzing a text without programming, uh, could you please talk a little bit about uh, the comparison uh, between these approaches? I mean, which is faster depending on the task and on other variables? I mean, how faster is in certain cases to program or to use these tools? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, programming is absolutely faster <laughs> just because you can do everything inside the Jupyter notebook. But if you uh, don't use uh, programming skills and if you use, for example, OpenRefine, you should to collect your data, organize it with a data, like a data frame, then, for example, upload to OpenRefine, make some transformation, then you export your result and upload to another tool. So the programming uh, is the main uh, plus of, uh, for example, doing it uh, in Python is just uh, because uh, just that you can do everything inside the Jupyter notebook, and it will be quicker. Even not about it's not about the time proce uh, processing, but it's about the time that you need to export, import, and to switch your different tools. And uh, today in Python, you have uh, even not uh, just the different libraries uh, that uh, can work with text, but you have like the uh, one space, for example, NLTK or uh, Stanza. Uh, it's the library with the uh, scope of different tools for tokenization, limitization, for sentiment analysis and other inside one library. So you can use it if you uh, uh, you analyze the text in one language, for example, in English. You can do everything inside uh, one library, for, for example, Stanza. So uh, of course, if you have even the basic skills of Python, it's better just to Google how to lemmatize, Python lemmatize text in, in which language. And you will have the algorithm uh, how to do it. Or if you want to um, sentiment analysis and you uh, again write uh, what language you have, what text data, and you will have the algorithm. So uh, my recommendation is, uh, first of all, not to be afraid of text analysis even if you don't know Python. And if you want to uh, upgrade your uh, programming skills, uh, then you can do it uh, quite easily for today. So, of course, if you know Python, it's better to do it in Python. <laughs> but if you don't know Python, it's also not a problem. There are some tools, and I showed you. I think we have one more question here. Hi. Just before I ask my question, to add to, the, to how fast it is, I work on this all like in a daily basis. I used to do text analysis of 10 documents, and that would take me months. And now I do more than 2,000, 3,000 documents, and you do it in less than an hour. So if you do it with programming, like I use R. I don't use Python, so I have no clue what happens in Python. I also don't know what happens in R, but I just type stuff and it does things. And it's much faster. And to, to, to my question, um, before you also mentioned that you also do network analysis through this. So I want to ask you, how is it that you do the network, network analysis with text data? Uh, no, uh, actually, if you have the text network analysis, it's always about the analysis of different IDs. Uh, IDs, for example, of organization, or it can be the organization name or organization ID. So it's now, um, 
difference between uh, forms. So when you make the network analysis, you work with prepared data. So to prepare this data uh, in such that if you have the data in such form as I showed you, it's really difficult. But then you just upload it to the uh, GAFI or use the network kicks or iGraph in R and you can do it quite easily. So network analysis is not about the text analysis, it's about the analysis of pairs of IDs. Do you have any additional questions to Yulia? Um, do, you both, do you have any questions from online? Okay, thank you Yulia for a very <laughs> <Thank> interesting <you. laughs> workshop.